and welcome guys to the very first episode of what is likely going to be a rather rather popular and fun how-to series to put together that's right we are here with seasons for farm sim 19 and uh, we are going to get started a little before the actual release of seasons i have been i have to say honored to uh, to have had the privilege of being able to not only have early access to seasons uh, but to be actually part of the testing team uh, for quite a while long time um, so this is exciting uh, this is really exciting for me and really exciting for lots of folks uh, clearly because now you're going to be able to get your first looks at actual seasons for farm sim 19. I'm not talking about screenshots anymore we're not talking about blog posts. Uh, we're not talking about folks talking about screenshots and blog posts. We are talking about the real deal seasons for Farm Sim 19. So before we get started too far in, let's take a look at the HUD itself. So for those that are seasoned seasons players from Farm Sim 17, uh, you'll notice the HUD has lots of familiar features just a little bit of a different look. Uh, so right there on the far left is a sun that is telling us that, of course, we are having sunny weather at the moment. Just like the standard game, uh, we will have a second icon appear there uh, to show us what the upcoming weather is. And as the weather changes, uh, the, those icons will change. Now, the next set of icons, the top thermometer is the current air temperature 33 degrees Fahrenheit the bottom number is the current ground temperature 39 degrees Fahrenheit now I've got mine set on Fahrenheit so that is how it came up by default for me for you it might come up Celsius we're gonna take a look here in a little bit at the actual um, interface to set all of those preferences Next icon, we are seeing a flower that is telling me that it is springtime. And then we have 01, that is the day number of spring. So we are in the first day of spring. And seasons has obviously four seasons. We have spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And within each of those four seasons, there are three transitions as I call them we have early mid and late so we are currently in early spring the next transition will be mid spring the last transition in spring will be late spring and then we'll move to early summer of course we have our clock and then we have our money amount that is basically the change in the HUD for seasons 19 so if we pull up our F1 menu, you're going to see that we're going to need to hit Left-Alt-S to go into the Seasons menu. So now that we are in the Seasons interface here, we're going to take a look through all of the various tabs and talk about the information that's on the screen. Uh, just for the new additions to Seasons, for those that have played Seasons in Farm Sim 17, some of this information is going to be the same. Some of this information is going to be very different. Uh, so I would not advise fast forwarding through this segment. So here we are at the calendar screen. And the calendar screen basically gives us an overview of the planting and harvest schedules for our various crops. Now, Seasons comes with a default geo that is based on the weather in the United Kingdom. Uh, and you'll find two crops in particular that you can't plant. Cotton has no planting or harvesting schedule. Same with sugarcane. You want to plant cotton or sugarcane? You're going to need a geo that supports planting of cotton and sugarcane. So what is a geo, you might ask? It is not just a really, really low expensive car. Some folks will get that joke. Others, that will just completely fly over their head. But at any rate, what a geo is, 
is a sub mod that gets added to your mod folder that completely changes the planting and harvesting schedule here in seasons. It also will change the uh, temperatures on any particular day as well as the chance of rain, chance of snow, uh, wind, speeds, all kinds of potential changes can happen with a geo. Uh, there are many geos that are in um, development at the moment. I don't know how many geos will be released when Seasons is released, but I do know that there are some that are actively in development right now. That If they're not released at the same time Seasons is released, uh, we should see those very, very shortly after that. Uh, for example, there is one based on the Midwest of the U.S. that would allow double cropping of selected crops. Uh, there is one that I believe is based in South America for the Estancia La Pacha map. Uh, that one was definitely going to allow the planting of cotton and sugarcane, for example. But the default geo does not permit that. So you can see here that we have our four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And just like I mentioned earlier, each season is separated up into three segments, early, mid, and late. So right now, Seasons is defaulted to a nine-day season. We can go over here and we can change that to a three-day season. And when we do that, each day is its own transition. So day one is early, day two is mid, day three is late. Come here and we can actually change this up to 24 days. At that point, the first eight days are early, the next eight days are mid, and the next eight days are late spring. Okay? For this purpose, we are going to go to three-day seasons, and we're just going to talk about that at this point. But we will definitely cover how many days you have as an option when we get to the last tab here in the uh, seasons interface. So now that we are at three-day seasons, you can see that basically we can plant our cereals, wheat, barley, oat, and canola here in spring. One of the first three day, first days of spring, either early, mid, or late spring. If we don't get wheat in the ground and it turns to summer, then our opportunity to plant is over for the year. We're going to have to wait until the late summer, early autumn time frame in order to put wheat in the ground for a possible harvest next year. Same with barley, oat, and canola. Sunflowers, it needs a bit warmer temperatures in order to germinate and grow. So you can see we can't actually plant sunflowers until mid-spring, and that is assuming the ground temperature works in our favor. So all of these temperatures here is the minimum ground temperature that we need to have in order for this crop to germinate. If we don't get the minimum ground temperature within the appropriate planting season, the crop will not germinate, it will be a loss. So there is the chance to completely lose, lose the crop, lose the field, lose the year, go bankrupt. Loss is a very big reality here with seasons. Soybeans and corn need even warmer ground temperatures. We can't even think about planting them until late spring, and we have a very narrow window of time to get those in the ground. We have late spring and early summer, and that is it for soybeans and corn using the default geo. Of course, if we pull in another geo, we're going to see different schedules here, or potentially different schedules. Oil seed and poplar, we can actually plant as early as early spring all the way up till the end of autumn. And then we shouldn't be planting that anymore. Grass, we can plant from early spring to the end of early winter. And then we shouldn't be planting that anymore. Now the other bars here represent the harvest schedule. So if we plant wheat, let's say in mid-spring, would we'll probably be able to harvest that sometime around early autumn to mid autumn. If we plant wheat in late summer, 
then we probably will be able to harvest that the following year in late summer. We uh, harv If we plant wheat, for example, in late spring, it might not be ready to harvest until late autumn or maybe late or maybe early winter, uh, depending on the, uh, the weather conditions between plant and harvest. Okay, you can obviously study this on your own, uh, but you can see, like, for example, soybeans, you have a pretty narrow time to harvest that from mid autumn till the end of early winter. And if we don't get it in the ground or out of the ground by the end of early winter, crop is a loss. Write it off. It is done for. So let's go and take a look at the next screen, which is our weather forecast. So the weather forecast we have basically here at the top, we have several time entries for today, uh, basically for the next 24 hours, if you will. And then we have the rest of the week basically listed over here in a bit of a uh, rough estimation as far as what we should expect weather-wise. Now remember, we are on three-day seasons at the moment, so every day is a different transition. So today is early spring, Tuesday is mid-spring, Wednesday is late spring, Thursday is early summer, Friday is mid-summer, Saturday is the equivalent of late summer, and Sunday, believe it or not, is the equivalent of early autumn. So right now we're looking at early spring to early autumn. Okay, so obviously, just like real forecasters, don't really have a clue what early autumn is going to look like in early spring. We don't really have a clue. It's just a rough estimation. What we also have in the forecast are nice little pictures here, so we can see it's going to be cloudy basically today and through tomorrow. Uh, later in the week, we've got different partly sunny, cloudy, full sun, as the forecast expects in early autumn. Then we have our maximum air temperature, our average air temperature, and our minimum air temperature. And again, once we get past today, there is a large chance of improbability uh, that is being tossed into these temperatures. We have the precipitation in millimeters. Chance of precipitation, not the exact amount that we will definitely see. You can see with this forecast, currently we're not seeing any rain until we get all the way to Thursday, which is basically early summer. Precipitation chance. Wind speed. Okay. So this is in meters per second. See, it's fairly windy today. It's going to taper off as we get into summer. Estimated. And then we have the drying potential. Since we now have the ability to cut grass and have it dry on the field, we need to understand and know what is the drying potential of the weather. So if we have a plus, means we have positive drying potential. We have a minus, likely means you're not going to see very much, if any, drying of your grass at that point in time. So as you could expect here, during the day, we have good drying potential. In the evening hours, not so good drying potential as the dew sets in, temperatures come down. Getting into the next day, our drying potential goes up. Also, if we have decent wind, and sun will have a higher drying potential. Uh, you could see multiple pluses here representing excellent drying potential. You might see multiple minuses representing very, very bad drying potential also. Let's go on to the next forecast, or next tab, I should say, and that is the crop information tab. So the crop information tab is basically going to list all of the crops on the map and their resistance to frost or drought during their various stages of growth. So for example, wheat has a medium frost resistance at a seed state. 
a high frost resistance in a young crop state and has absolutely no frost resistance at a mature state. So if you have, let's say you have wheat still in the ground in late autumn and you have a cold snap, you end up having a very cold night. There's the potential the next day you wake up and find your wheat crop withered because you had frost and as you can see there is no frost resistance with wheat so the weather temperature the moisture all have a very important factor to play with respect to are you going to successfully be able to one get your seed out of the ground as a young seedling two are you going to be able to get that crop harvested before it goes into a wither state because unlike seasons in 17 basically where we knew wheat wasn't going to wither until the first day of winter using this schedule that's not the case anymore wheat might wither sometime in autumn if you get a bitter cold snap if you have a really nice autumn and a fairly warm early winter you might be able to harvest all the way into midwinter before you get the withering state happening. Now, if we continue on with our wheat example, you can see that wheat has no drought resistance as a seed. If you don't have a adequate amount of rain when you first put this in the ground, if the, uh, the ground moisture isn't well enough, then you're gonna have problems getting this seed to, uh, to germinate. As a young crop, it has low drought resistance, meaning that it could go a little ways, uh, but really you don't want it to be super, super dry. And then as a mature crop, it has medium drought resistance. If we take a look at some other crops here, for example, corn, you'll see corn has a low frost resistance when it's in seed and young form, but a mature corn plant only has medium frost resistance compared to the crops above it, which are all listed as none. Um, so it's possible your corn could go through an early frost and not get withered, or you might find small parts of your crop get withered, but the most of the field is fine. As far as drought resistance of corn, we are at a low drought resistance for seeds, which means you have a better chance at basically having good germination uh, on corn if it's fairly dry compared to, say, canola. As a young plant, it has medium drought resistance and medium drought resistance as a mature plant. So this is very, very important to understand and reference with respect to when you should seed, what's the ground temperature going to look like, What's the ground moisture going to look like? And what is my chances of getting this crop to actually germinate uh, before it has an issue as a result of maybe too much rain, too little rain, too high temperature, or too cold of temperature? Let's take a look here at the economy tab. So the economy tab is going to basically tell you, give you an estimation based on historical data, uh, when the good time to sell is. So we have all of our crops are gonna be listed here. And basically it is gonna have over time a historical reference of basically what that crop sold for during that particular time frame last year. Since this is a new save game, we don't have any historical information. We just have average information and you can see this is not only our crops this extends to animal products wood chips silage bales now notice it's not loose this is bale format loose hay and loose straw not worth a thing then animals you may notice the animals well they're named a bit different we'll get to that here a bit. Now, feature that is probably the most interesting and probably the most or least understood 
by everyone at this point is going to be the crop rotation planter or planner. So I'm going to go ahead and try to go into a little bit of detail on that one. So on this screen, we can schedule out up to four different rotations. And in that rotation, we have six different, um, basically, years. So if we look here, we have rotation one, two, three, and four. And then each row is a harvest cycle, or basically a year, unless you can double crop. Let's go and say we can have rotation one, start with a fallow field. Rotation two can start with a wheat field. Rotation three, let's start with a soybean field. And rotation four, let's start with corn. Okay, now we see we have these values beside the particular crop. Let's go here and let's say we're going to leave a field fallow one year, which means we're not going to plant on it at all. And then we're going to come in and we're going to put wheat. Now we have a 1.08. It's telling me that we're going to get an, a boost in our crop for leaving that field fallow in the first year and planting wheat in the next year. Let's continue on with this rotation. If we leave it fallow the following year, we get a big boost in our wheat. So if we leave it fallow for years one and three, plant wheat in year two, 1.2, basically a 20% boost in harvest to be expected. Double crop this in wheat. See, we get a little bit of a bonus for leaving it fallow the first year. Second year we put wheat in it, we lose that bonus. We continue to put wheat in it. You can see that our then our bonus drops to 0.90, so we now will lose yield because we've rotated wheat so many times. If we put cotton in here, for example, let's do this. Back to none. We follow wheat with cotton. We get a boost not only on the wheat, but we get a boost with the cotton. Canola, sunflowers, soybeans, and corn. Okay? So we can do wheat and then soybeans. And then we could come in here and put... corn in and then basically that can be a rotation so we can have leave the field fallow for the first year put wheat in it the second year put soybeans in it the third year and put corn in it the fourth year and you can see we're getting a little bit of a boost on our wheat and our corn but not our soybeans take a look here at rotation two the wheat put potatoes in, we get a pretty big hit on our wheat. We could put wheat in one year, leave it fallow, come along and we could put, let's say, corn in it the following year, come along and put Sunflowers in it the following year. Put soybeans in it. Okay. And then we could go to back to. corn the following year. And you can see basically how this is all going to work out. Okay. Let's go ahead and just click through a few of these. See how these values are changing. And the purpose of this is really just to plan out your crop. See, 
depending on what we pick, our values could seriously change even as far back as a previous year. So when we picked corn here, our barley went to 1.08. See this fallow. Then we're going to leave those none. So that's the cycle we're going to do for this particular crop. And we're going to go corn, soy, um, sunflowers. Then we're going to leave it fallow, and then that's all we're going to do for that rotation. We're going to rotate corn and sunflowers and then leave it fallow, then corn, sunflowers, and leave it fallow. So this is going to help us basically plan out our crops, plan out our planting, and we can see basically what our yield bonus or hit is going to be. And now the setting screen, this is where we could change our temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now they are in Celsius for pretty much everyone outside of the United States. This makes complete sense to you. For those of us inside the United States, for the most part, this is what makes complete sense to us. So you can basically have it show up however you want. My screens, I'm going to have it set on Fahrenheit. We're going to leave seasons introductions on. Uh, so we can see the uh, description of each season. Then we have season length. Uh, every time we change this, there is the potential that our weather forecast is going to change. So pretty careful uh, when you're changing this. I would not advocate changing this once you start your gameplay for real. So we have the choice of three-day seasons, which means that for every transition you have one, Day. We have six day seasons, which means every transition will give you two days. Three, nine day seasons will give you a transition every three days. What you're going to find is all of these season lengths are divisible by three. Twelve day seasons is going to give you four days per transition. Fifteen day seasons is going to give you five days per transition. 18-day seasons is going to give you 6 days per transition. 21-day seasons is going to give you 7 days per transition. And 24-day seasons is going to give you 8 days per transition. We're going to go back here to 3 days. Crop moisture. This, is, this allows harvesting when crops have an excess of moisture of 20%. Snow tracks, we can basically turn snow tracks on and off. And snow mode, if you don't want snow, well, you can just turn it off doing that. One layer on or off. Okay. So we're just going to leave it on three days. And it looks like we have a little bit of snow falling uh, now that we've gone in here and played with the, uh, the temperatures a little bit. Take a look at that. We've got snow falling now. So let's go over here to a field. And we're going to talk about crop rotation schedule a little bit. So in the lower right now, you see the field information screen. This is something else that is new for, uh, for seasons in Farm Sim 19. And that is our field information panel. Uh, we have the normal information, who the field is owned by. Is it fertilized? Is it weeded? Does it need lime? Does it need plowing? And now you can see down here previous fallow, before previous fallow. Let's go over to this one. Same information. Same information. Let's run over here to this field. Okay, we have the same information there. Let's jump over here to another field. And see what this one says. Okay, so you can see this one says that it had corn in it. That's what the fruit type corn means. Uh, previously, it was fallow, and he is probably going to be planting a cereal crop next. So basically, this can help you with 
your crop rotation planning because you can see what you planted in it previously. This previously had a cereal crop in it. Uh, it now has sugar beets that uh, he did not get out of the field. And it will be... Well, sorry. did that wrong. Two years ago, this had a cereal crop in it. Last year, he had... This crop was fallow. And right now it had sugar beets in it. I think I misspoke over here on this one, too. So, it had corn in it. Two years ago, it was fallow, and the year before, uh, he put corn in it, it had a cereal crop. So, there you go. So, that, that fixed that. S speaking, we can take a look at this one. So this one had cotton in it. Before cotton, it had a cereal crop, and before that, it was fallow. This one had canola in it. Before that, it had a cereal crop, and before the cereal crop, it was fallow. Okay? That gives you a little bit of an idea about that. Now, let's talk about the growth things that have changed. You can see now we have germination failed is a new option here. So basically if you germinate your if your crop doesn't germinate then basically you will have a dead spot in your field or the entire field will just just not come up. You basically have to recultivate it, start from scratch, reseed it. Uh, what you will probably see is that basically you'll see little patches in your field where germination will fail. And basically you have a choice. Come back and reseed that and basically have a risk of it being slightly off schedule with the rest of the field. You just leave it be and ignore it or what? Okay, so you do have the risk of not having your entire field uh, germinate as a result of whatever weather conditions or ground conditions have. Now if we look at soil composition, we have three stages of fertilizing. Those that have played Farm Sim 17 will be very familiar with a three stage fertilizing need. Uh, if you only played Farm Sim 19, this is new, uh, but for seasons you have to fertilize three times. Now. Just a general note, some folks are probably going to ask, why are my colors completely different than yours? I have colorblind mode enabled in the game settings uh, because I find it easier to see this coloration than the standard in-game coloration. So that is why mine looks different than yours. So if we toggle off slime, toggle off that, toggle off that, and basically all we have now are the weeds. Can see that there is a little patch of weed here on field 11. A little patch of weeds over here on field 5. So let's go ahead and jump over here to field 5 and take a look at that little patch of weeds. Alright, so I've run over here to field 5 and basically we are looking at that little patch of weeds. Right there, might be a little hard to see, but it's basically right there where my flashlight is. That is the young little patch of weeds. Uh, the rest of the field is weed free. We just have weeds here at this little patch. We can come in here if we own this field with a weeder and basically pull them up right now. We could come in here with a herbicide sprayer, spray those weeds, spray this little spot we'd be good to go or we could just let them be I mean how much is is your crop really going to be detrimented by this little patch of weeds right so that is for me one of the biggest and most beneficial changes between base farm sim 19 and the new farm sim 19 with seasons is that weeds eh, are they that big of a deal 
Not really. You just leave them there, as far as I'm concerned. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other things related to seasons. So on our prices, and I kind of alluded to, to this earlier, bulk, hay, straw, and grass has no value. Don't try to sell it. You're not going to get any money for it. That is the same as with Farm Sim 17 with Seasons gameplay, uh, but basically it's going to be new to anyone that's not played with Seasons before. If you go and pick up a whole bunch of straw with a forage wagon, run it over the barn, you can dump it in the barn all you want, but you're giving it away because you're not going to get any money for it. Now, just because this says zero does not mean you won't get money if you sell it as a bale. Remember, when we went to our seasons menu, when we went to the economy, we could see that hay bales, right now they're selling for uh, somewhere just under $110. Straw bales are selling just under $81, okay? So bales have a value. Loose material, not so much. Grass bales have no value whatsoever. If you're going to bale grass, you need to basically wrap it so it becomes silage. That's pretty much the only purpose to bale grass. Maintenance. We no longer need to maintain our tractors. Well, we do need to maintain them. Just not with near the frequency that we had to maintain them in the base game. I believe the schedule is 15 hours of engine time. Might be 30 like it was in Farm Sim 17, but I think I read uh, that they had cut that in half to 15. Your mileage may vary. You'll figure it out pretty quick uh, with respect to the maintenance needed. Let's take a look here at our finances screen. You're going to see something down here. Livery stable income. So it's been alluded to in the blog post that horse livery uh, is basically how you earn money with horses in Farm Sim 19. Uh, you don't earn money by buying them, keeping them for 10 days, and selling them for a mega profit. Uh, basically, you earn money with horses by caring for them. And every night, the horse owner... Not you, the horse owner, then pays you a little bit of a income in basically boarding, feeding, and caring for their horse. You're going to find contracts are a bit harder to come by in seasons, especially if you play with multiple day seasons, something greater than three day seasons. For example, if you played on 15-day seasons, uh, you could probably very easily run through all of the contracts until the next time um, something needs to happen. Because uh, if you go and do all the cultivation contracts, uh, the first early part of spring, well, these folks aren't going to need uh, much done probably until the appropriate planting schedule says that they need to plant their crops. So that is something to pay attention to. Now, let's go talk about animals. So now that we're over here to the animal dealer, let's take a look. Animals are completely different in Farm Sim 19 with Seasons as compared to Farm Sim 19 without Seasons. Basically, we now have animal breeds. Take a look here at the pigs. Uh, we basically have male and female pigs. If we have a bunch of female pigs, we don't get piglets. No, indeedy. We need a male pig basically to make little piglets. We have Yorkshire, male pig. This one, Gloucestershire, Old Spot is a female. Spotted is a male. Yorkshire is a female pig. See, basically, they have an age and a weight associated with them. 
feeding requirements are based on age and weight. We have our sheep, female sheep. We only have female sheep. Okay. And we have various types of cows, and we have beef cattle and dairy cattle. Depending on the cow breed you give here, basically it's going to depend on if you get milk or not. So, Ashire is a dairy cattle. Holstein is a dairy cattle. Salar is not. That is a beef cattle. Same with the limousine. And then the, all of the Brahmin are all beef cattle also. See the Holstein, 1.9 years, 1,089 pounds. Versus the Salar, which is 0.8 years at 610 pounds. And again, you're going to find that unlike Farm Sim 17 with Seasons, you're going to find that, well, your animals can die if they become too old. So basically selling your animals uh, before they die on their own is going to be a bit of a, a way to profit. Uh, selling them before they get too terribly old is going to be important uh, because they will lose value if they get too old. Uh, they will start to lose production, be that in milk, or they will kind of slow down their weight gain uh, if they get too old, if they are a beef cattle. And you'll see down here we have our horses. And our horses do not have any prices associated with them. That is if we pick them up. If we put down a horse paddock and basically buy the horse from the paddock, it's going to charge us a delivery fee. But horses at this point are not going to charge us a delivery fee uh, because we're not buying the horse simply picking it up and transporting it to our facility to basically care for the um, care for the animal for the owners so guys I think that's where I'm going to call it for this video this is just video number one an introductory video to seasons 19 uh, come back tomorrow where we are going to start doing a little of seasons play in a how-to format uh, tomorrow we're going to basically talk about planting and we're going to plant some crops we're going to do some other things so uh let me know in the comments how excited are you to see seasons for farm sim 19 coming in just a few short days like I said earlier uh, what i am showing you is a pre-release version of seasons the information you see on the screen may or may not be different uh, by the time Seasons releases for real. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell.